Hey, everybody. Welcome to episode 18 of Call to the Pen. Uh, today, we have my good friend, AJ Ramos, on with us. And as Kent says, you alluded to earlier, because uh, I, I keep forgetting you played for the Marlins since it was the COVID year, get three former Marlins closers on, on the same, at the same time. So maybe oh, wow. we all can throw yeah. out the first pitch one day. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I'm at the throw with my left hand, man. My, my right arm is not good. <laughs> <laughs> no, Kent's has seen me try to lob a thread. ball. Kids to see me try to lob a ball to first base and stuff like that. Me throwing a first pitch wouldn't be pretty either. Oh my god! Probably not. I had to play. I had to play catch with uh, with uh, Stanton this past off season, and man, I was trying to. I was throwing. I felt like a uh, just my arm did not work. I was trying to toss it. I had to throw it from like my hip. Basically, I was a gunslinger. It was, uh, it was not so pretty, like, but I got it to him though. You look like Reed Cornelius trying to play catch. Hit- Yes, I was going to say that, but I was like, I don't know if people know who that is. So, like, it's yeah. Good. yeah, but yeah, I was exactly thinking of him, but yeah, it's, so it's not good. Just for reference, Reed Cornelius was the, our Marlins bullpen coach, incredible human being, like one of my favorite coaches I've ever had. And his shoulder is completely destroyed. Like, I don't know how he can function with it so bad. And he would play catch with people every day, and it was the most painful thing to witness. He just well, straight only- up wear it. Not only was it every day, it was multiple times a day because he was he he helped bullpen catch as well. So yep. he, guys would go out there and get 175 feet. I'm like, what are you guys doing to this man? This poor guy is <laughs> you clearly can see his shoulder is not healthy, and you got him out there throwing. This is his third time throwing today, but he's he's one of my favorite coaches as well. Just a great human being. He he got the uh, human side of it all. You know, he was able to speak to that side while also getting you to perform the way you want to perform. He was one of my favorite coaches for sure absolutely he he coined the phrase kent's i think we messed around with it in chicago like there's two types of people in this world killers and petting zoos yeah. <laughs> yeah. and so we're like going through the line of who's a killer out there and who's a petting zoo just jokingly it was it was great so i kind of carried that <laughs> with me through the speaking through the of ranks. that speaking of that well i don't want to call him a petting zoo because i don't really know him but what do you guys got on the 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 uh, was it a starter for uh the mariners <laughs> Oh, no, we were just talking about that before you came on. Petting zoo, yeah. automatic petting zoo for life. So so that's petting zoo actions. I don't know if he's a petting zoo guy because I think he later like said that that's not me. He backtracked. Like, but it, yeah, but you, you got to kind of cover yourself. But, man, that I felt like cringy when he was saying that. I'm like, man, they definitely asked this kid in the worst time. He's still in his emotions, and he answered out of emotion instead of, you know, taking mm-hmm. a, a deep breath and just did the whole Derek Jeter answer, you know, the whole standard – you know, easy, you know, media hates it, but that's, it keeps you safe. It's almost like he gave too much information of what's going on in his head. Exactly. Well, the fact that he said, and we're going to have a conversation after this, it's like, what are you talking about? What's your conversation going to be? You're just a first or second year player. (laughs) You just do what the manager says and shut up. Man. Yeah, man. Well, it's, it's the analytics. The problem with that. So there's great things about it. And then there's bad things about it. The, the bad thing about it for me is that it shows you when you're supposed to be bad, what, what your numbers look like. When oftentimes throughout the season, I bet I pitched in those bad numbers analytics probably 40, 50 percent of, 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 of that year. But because I don't associate with what I'm doing is bad, I'm just like, I don't care. Whatever I have today has to work in this game. I don't care what it is. So you take that mindset of making your bad and making that work instead of, associating oh when i feel like this usually my numbers my spin rate is this and then when i'm my spin rate is that it gets hit you start yeah. uh, associating that and you start you know uh you start making yourself worse when it, the the big power is the belief that your stuff you have the stuff no matter what day you are a b c d game that whatever that that order is or whatever you feel that day is going to work and that's that's the problem with analytics it gives you too much information and you you assign negative or positive to that information when it's just information, really. Yeah, dude, you're preaching to the choir. <laughs> yeah. yeah, especially Kent's. Uh, I mean, I was too, but you know, we don't pitch to the computers very well. The computers don't don't like our stuff. You know, he's a heavy wow. heavy sinker baller, as you know, and like you know, oh, your spin rate's down and all this stuff. And he's like, yeah, but you don't strike out a lot of people. They're like, yeah, but I get outs. Who cares? I don't care what your computer says. Like. I have the mentality to go out there and get out on a consistent basis. And that's a yeah. lost art. Well, and I had to, I had to really compete with that my last year, which was 21. I was in AAA for most of the year. And one of the big reasons why I was in AAA was because my analytics, the thing that was hurting me 
all, age was, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't the same person that maybe they wanted, um, but I was still getting out. But the other thing that was against me is I was pitching in Salt Lake. So your yeah. numbers are going to be hmm. even worse. The other thing, and I think the even more important thing that uh, was messing with me was that I'm pitching in minor league games. I was a big league closer for, uh, I would say, yeah, most of my career almost. And even in big league games, if I came in a game and it was, we were winning, you know, eight to zero or we were losing six to zero, whatever, I was not the same guy. So you right. take that same guy and you throw him in a minor league game where, you know, it, it's like nothing for me. I mean, it's right. something I don't want to discredit, you know, people out there, but like, in it's my a whole mindset, other level. yeah, it's, it's a whole, it's a whole nother thing, you know? So mm -hmm. like, you know, that part was really messing with me. And then this, the, the ice or the cream on the cake or whatever is the analytics didn't look good. And I was like, man, I'm getting out and I'm doing, well, I had one bad month there, which was really bad, <laughs> but it, the analytics weren't helping me, but I'm like, I can transcend that. You guys just put me, put me in the big leagues and then let me fail if you if you think that's going to happen just give me that shot but right. you know it's it was tough it was tough yeah, they don't we, understand uh, that anymore like unless you've actually pitched in the big league game for years and go down like just like everyone gets lit up in rehab games you go to a rookie ball <laughs> you're getting crushed like you know you're probably getting ambushed you're giving up four homers or you're throwing five pitches it's gonna go either way yeah, totally. Every, everybody's first pitch hacking everyone because everyone wants to take you deep. I mean, I love yeah. I love facing those guys because it is harder. They're like, oh, he's a, he was a, he was an all star. OK, you know, I'm, I'm going to dig in. I'm going to really give him my, my best, you know, and I like facing people like that. Um, but it does. It, it is a different mindset. And uh, it's it's so different. Those levels, man. I mean, it's you know, it's close, but it's so different at the same time. What's amazing about that, AJ, is I remember that year so. I'm with the angels and you're in, you're in triple a we're, I'm like, we're looking at your numbers and everything like that. And you're, you're pitching fine. And I'm like, why isn't he like, what are they so afraid of calling this guy up? He's a all-star closer. And they're, if they're concerned, I'm concerned about his numbers. His stuff is going to tick up as soon as he gets up to the big leagues. Says, I, I know you first of all. And that, that happens to everybody, right? You just get that extra boost. Like, what are they waiting for? And then they called you up at the end of the year and you still shoved for whatever it was, five innings or something like that. Yeah. It, it, it was so frustrating to watch, you know, you having to go through that down there when I'm, I knew for a fact you could have helped us in the big league when we needed it. Our bullpen was struggling. Yeah, I think that's whenever I knew that I was losing that that fire um, because that was one of the hardest years for me to like get to the field and like prepare. One because of all the you're, I'm older, uh, repaired shoulder, all the crap <laughs> I had to do day in day out to to uh, just be able to throw an inning, and then for my arm still to hurt and for it to not feel the best. You know what I mean? Um, although my performance was was good, it still wasn't to the level where I wanted it to be, yeah. you know, where I thought it could be. Um, so that, and then it was just hard to go to the field. And I was like, man, I don't know how much longer I was questioned. That was when the question entered my mind, like how much longer can you do this? You know? And then when I got up to the big leagues, it was more, I was more uh, happy that I was like, yes, I got up. And like, despite you guys not wanting me to get up and I still, so it was more of a win like that than like, Hey, I'm in the big leagues again. And I'm, and I feel good to be up here. And like, you know, it, it was just, I just knew my fire was gone just by the way I approached it and how much harder it was to just to go to the field every day, man. And, and so when I got injured again, I was like, man, I, I, first of all, for me to make it up to the, to the big leagues, I had to have extreme, extreme drive. That was what made me good because my, my uh, attributes and like how, how hard I throw the ball, how I spin it isn't, it isn't all that exciting. But my belief in myself and my will to to be good is what made me good, you know. So so for kids out there that maybe aren't you know six four and don't throw ninety eight, like there's if you if you want it bad enough, you will find a way to get up there. And that's and that's what I did. I wanted it so bad, and I knew that I could do it. So I put that work in daily to get there. And so once I was in you know, triple, or once I got hurt again in, in spring training of 22, I was like, I, I don't have that drive that I used to. Like the game doesn't feel, I don't have as much love for the game as I used to. So without that, I'm going to, it's going to take maybe longer to come back. 
while if and being in half in half out phase is not a good a good feeling and a good way to live life because you're just like questioning things you're not in alignment you know so once i got hurt and uh my another thing too is my my daughter was coming she was my my wife was pregnant what she was five four months pregnant or something at that point so i was like you know what i want to give my all to to my family because you know i've given my all to baseball for what 36 30 36 years or so something like that so you know, it's, um, it was just that time. And I kind of felt like, all right, if I'm even questioning this, then I, I probably shouldn't be playing. Yep. I think when the game's not loving you back, I think that's when we realize we've given so much and now it's not giving anything back. It's time to go. Yeah. Yeah. Well then too, I was also like, well, I want to get to the big leagues for the, for the paycheck. So exactly. I was like, man, that's not a good re I mean, that's a, no. it's a good, it's a good reason, but it shouldn't be one of the main reasons. It should be like, right. I get to get, I get paid to play baseball. That should be the feeling. Not, oh man, I, I want to get that check. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it was a totally different mindset. I'm like, this is not where I'm at my best. Hmm. You know, so. So yeah, I mean, look, you're, I mean, at the top of the top of hardest workers I've ever played with, <clears throat> and I think it's important because we have a lot of like younger guys, and when I'm getting feedback from college coaches and uh, players and stuff. Um, you know, taking notes on a lot of stuff. I, I think it's helpful to hear practically how you um, prepared yourself day in and day out uh, for a major league baseball game. <clears throat> and you can start from the minor leagues. Like what, what did you do in the minor leagues? And then what kind of changes did you make as you got up to the big leagues to prepare yourself for one day of baseball and have that as a routine day in and day out? Because me and Kent, we're big routine guys. We're always in the weight room at the same time, getting our bodies loose, stuff like that. I remember when I was with the Marlins, you had your own, we called it AJ's weight room in the bullpen where you had the weights back there <laughs> Yeah, uh, cause yep. you were just an animal. Um, I just want to, if you could break it down, if you, if you can, uh, practically what that looked like for you day in and day out to get physically and mentally ready for, uh, for battle. Yeah. In the, in the minor leagues, uh, before I got to double a, I was still kind of figuring out my process because, um, in, in college I was a starter and, once I got drafted, they said my size, my, uh, you know, my attributes, whatever, you need to go in a pin. So from there, it took me a couple of years to figure out that routine of how to get ready right off the fly. Because my worst innings in college were the first and second inning. But once I got warm, it was like, all right, I'm, I'm good. But uh, so I had to figure out how to, to get ready really quickly. And one of the ways I finally arrived at was to do a, a quick workout in the pin or you know, in the minor leagues, it was in the pen, but in the, in the big leagues, it was in the weight room. And to get my body going, to get the juices going, I would I would uh, have like a, a an upbeat song in my head to like really uh, get the juices flowing, get like my, my adrenaline going because uh, I want to feel that. I want to feel that power. I want to feel powerful when I'm going into the game, not, not all right, well, let's throw this first pitch and see how it goes because in the pen, you've got to be good for pitch one. Or else you're going to have a hard, hard outing. And I've had a lot of hard outings because it took me a bit. It took me the bases loaded to get going, you know. Um, so so for me, it was crafting a, a, a um, routine so that, like, when I enter the game, I'm hot. So finally, I arrived in double A. And when I was closing in the what third, fourth, fifth innings, I would go into the weight room and do a quick workout. And what that workout consisted of is like a heavy lift, like a, a uh, uh, what is it called? Deadlift, a trap bar mm -hmm. deadlift with heavy weight to, to kind of feel the strength of my legs. And then I would do a big jump or like a, a, a max vertical jump to, to utilize the strength with, with the uh, quickness or with the quick twitch muscles. So I would do that for my, my lower body. And then I would do a... Um, like a, a, a press, like a bench press or so to kind of get my chest going with a, a fast med ball. Then I do a lot of rotation works to get, to get my, my core uh, activated and ready to rotate. And then the last I would do some skater jumps back and forth to, to utilize my, my lateral movement so that I, I was just warming up all the areas that I need warmed up to go pitch. And then once I got to the bullpen, I started doing weighted balls before a lot of people do it, but I didn't do it. I don't do it the same way like driveline does it and all that stuff. I did it more yep. for, um, for just getting my arm loose. And uh, so then I go to the, the bullpen around the seventh inning and I would throw, maybe do 15 throws one, uh, you know, half of them from my, my landing stance. Uh, when, um, 
and I would throw those and then the last half from my full motion to kind of get my body in, into rhythm because I was all about, I was all about rhythm. Um, so then I, then I would, uh, uh, they would call down and then I get ready to go. But as far as off the field, man, I, I was, uh, diet and sleep were the biggest things. When I made those changes in, in double A, I started to, to make sure I got at least seven hours of sleep and, um, make sure I, I was eating the best food. That's when I, for some reason, my velo just jumped. And yep. uh, it, it was like from sitting 92 to sitting 95 in double A. And from then I was like, all right, this, there's something to this. And then as I got to the big leagues, I got a nutritionist. I got, you know, I leveled up on all that stuff to like really see what, it, what uh, my body performs well on. So, you know, I, for me, I had to take every opportunity to, to maximize my abilities because again, I didn't throw a hundred. Um, I'm not the tallest guy. So I, I sought out everything possible to help me um, be the best that I can be on the field. Cause that's, 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 uh, it was important to me, you know? That's great. So um, when you say nutrition wise, I mean, you were living with Stanton a lot in <laughs> Miami pretty much. And that guy can flat out eat dude. <laughs> so yeah, I've seen you yes. eat before. I'm, I'm assuming you kept up with him. Oh yeah. Well, I think all the working out helped me out. So <laughs> whenever we, we go eat at a restaurant, and we usually both get two entrees and an appetizer. And every <laughs> yeah, time, it's crazy. After, every time, <laughs> every time we'd order, the waiter or waitress would always say, "You know, that's a lot of food, right?" And we're like, "That's why we ordered it." Like, yeah. you know, we yeah, we were big eaters, man. I even now still, I still eat a, a bunch of food, but I'm, I'm still, I still like to work out and be active. But yeah, it's it's something I really enjoy eating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. I remember seeing you in the fall league and. What was it? Were there 10 or 11? 11? 11. 11. 11. Yeah. And I'm like, who is this guy? And you were striking everybody out. And then I saw you in your major. We, I was in, in Milwaukee and I faced you guys in your major league debut and you struck out the heart of the order. I'm like, yeah. that's that dude. That was that guy. <laughs> like, <laughs> it was awesome well, to watch. It's cool to see someone in the fall league and just coming into their own. And then all of a sudden they make their debut and they strike out three, four, and five of a pretty good lineup. Yeah, it was Weeks, Braun, and uh, Ramirez, Aramis Ramirez. Yeah. Um, yeah, dude. I Again, that fire, man. I That's something that I really miss um, post-playing is that fire that I used to have that, like, I knew exactly what I wanted to do and I, and I was going to do whatever I had to do to get there. And whenever I faced guys, it was like I, t I was very – I took it personally. Like, you are standing in my box. Like, no, 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 no. I'm going I'm to strike you out. Like, I don't want to just have you ground out, but I want to make you look silly. Like, I want to, like, <laughs> because. Sounds like Scherzer. Con constantly, man, I was constantly challenged. I was constantly overlooked. I was constantly, like, like counted out. So, like, I took all of that. So, like, for me, one of the biggest things is I took all of that negative energy and I harnessed it and I, and I let it go on the field. And, I, and I, that thing, it just fueled me. And I get chills thinking about it, like that feeling like, no, nah, like, I remember you told me this. I remember this person said this about me, even a comment. Like I read, I, I try not to read comments, but I read a comment or something. Boom, I'm taking that and I'm going to use it. I, I use everything to help that goal of being the best that I could be. Everything, right. diet, yep. a, a good comment, a bad comment, whatever it is. Like I'm using all of you to do that. And that's what I, that's the way I was there during, during that time. And I was like, I am going to make the big leagues. And I'm going to make it like that year is that same year, that double A year. So the, the uh, season after that uh, 11 uh, in the fall league, I said, I'm going to make the big leagues this year. I made a promise to myself. I didn't tell anybody else. I said, this is the year I'm going to make the big leagues. And when you make that decision, you need to decide that whatever it is, that's going to be your goal. Like, and you really hone in on that and you feel it so deeply inside of you. You're going to do whatever it takes to get there. And I think that's what a lot of people need to do. You need to find whatever you really like, what gives you that feeling of like, maybe a little bit of, you may recognize it as, as anxiety or nerves or something, but that's a, that's, that's just energy, you mm -hmm. know, and you assign, you assign the negative or positive to whatever that energy is. And so for me, I got that feeling of like, it's a little scary, but yes, I'm going to, I'm going to make it to the big leagues this year. And I was like, I felt it deep in my soul. I said, all right, I'm going to do whatever it takes to get there. And that's what you saw in fall league. And that's what you saw in, in the big leagues, man. I was like, 
I, I get chills thinking about it again. I'm just sitting there thinking like, I'm going to show everybody that I belong here. Like, this is, this is me. I belong here. I'm going to show everybody. I struck out, I struck out weeks and I was like, and by the way, I didn't know this for a long time. I struck out everybody with the same ball. Because really? That's uh, sick. Robert Brantley didn't throw it in. He was a rookie as well. And so I think there was a foul off. <laughs> weeks fouled off the original ball. And then after that, I, I, it was the same ball I struck out all three of them with. And I have it at my house That's sick. Uh, in Texas, That's tough which is to pretty do. cool. I didn't know that until um, Fresario, Joe Fresario, uh, uh, told me that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, and when I got there, I was like, I struck out, I struck out weeks and I was like, I felt that energy. I'm like, Oh, calm down, calm yeah. down. You got, you got another hitter. Like you still got something to prove. You still got something to prove. Struck out Braun. And I was like, I just struck out the reigning MVP. That's right. And my mind wanted to go to like how bat cool and, and awesome I was. And the other mind was like, Hey, you ain't nothing yet. You got one yeah. more out. Yep. You still got another, let's go lock it in. I, I'm getting a lot of chills right now. Cause this other dude wants to get you too. The next guy <laughs> exactly. wants to, that's the hardest thing. Two outs, nobody on. And you let down always like yeah. double off the wall, Homer or something. It's like, what the hell just happened? <laughs> Bro. And I, I remember looking in for the, uh, it was Aramis Ramirez. I remember looking in like, all right, all right, let's go. I, if I, if I was a bull, there'd be steam coming out of my nose at that time. I just felt, <laughs> but, and the hard thing about that is for a lot of the young guys that come in is controlling that, that mm -hmm. uh, energy. <laughs> like it's, it's great to feel that energy, but if you don't control it, that ball's the backstop, that ball's in the dirt, the ball's over the fence, you know? So like, you know, being able to control those emotions and I was, you know, I was really good at controlling that, at, at, you know, that day, especially. And I remember, I think it was a two, two count with Ramirez and in the meeting previously, uh, the, the, uh, pitchers meeting, they said, if you get in trouble, do not, or one of the trouble zones for Ramirez is the inside fastball. Do not throw that inside fastball. And it was two, two count. And I think I just threw a slider before that. And I was like, fastball inside right here. And in my head there, that, 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 uh, Hey, don't do that. And I'm like, yeah. this is me. I'm, 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 this is my time right here. I'm going to do, and I shook, Brandy called fastball in. I said, yes, sir. Chunked it right by him. And it was like perfect at the hands fastball. I was going to say, I remember it. seeing it a little up, right? Yeah, it was up. It was up. I could remember. Spin rate that day. I remember all the <laughs> about of everything. Yeah, that's crazy. I barely remember this story. So, <laughs> so well, you said, you said basically like controlled aggression. That's what, you know, you thrived off yes. of. Yes. I do remember a time though, where there was a lack of controlled aggression. Yeah. <laughs> do you know, I'm yeah. you know where I'm going to go with this? Yeah. So in quals? 20, yes, 2013, I don't know if you were struggling or something, you're in a kind of in a rut, but AJ hates when you get slapped in the back of the head or like, he, like <laughs> it like puts him into Beltran. another, like another world of anger, like, like, <laughs> a, like a bull in a China shop. And and we convinced Chad Qualls to slap him in the back of the head as he was, was it the back of your head, right? Yeah. Right yeah, before yeah. you, after he's warming up, as he's about to run out the gate in the bullpen, just whap him one. Oh. And AJ, AJ went along with it though. He knew it was coming. So yeah. he just stood there, wore it, and then ran out there. And this dude, correct me if I'm wrong, walked the bases loaded and then struck out the side. <laughs> yeah, I did. I had a hard time reining it in. He uh, was spraying Chad, it everywhere, and we were like, oh, no. I hope Chad Qualls like, had to come in it. after him because that would be great. Uh, he might have rolled his ankle before that. Remember that? <laughs> yeah, did you, that was the same year he did the fist pump fall forward. Thing. And do we uh, ever get to the bottom of, of why he fist pumped so hard for that? Like, no, we never did. We just or, like, did, like, what was that? I don't know. I don't know. It wasn't a huge moment in the game, I don't recall. No, it was like we were – I think we were up by like three. It was like in the sixth, seventh inning or something like that. It, was, it wasn't even bases loaded. It was like, what are you doing? Um, but, yeah, that, he, he he was like, um, he's like hey, when I, when I do this, don't punch me, all right? Don't punch me. I'm like, no, I'm not going to punch you, man. So he slapped me out <laughs> I ran out the gate. I think that was probably my fastest time to the mound as well. So yeah, was, hilarious. I, After I, the game, he was basically. still like he was still like pacing his locker, like angry, like yeah. dude, it's over. Like it's yeah. all good. You got out of it. Yeah. Oh, you got out of it. You walked the bases loaded and got out of it. Yeah. Yeah. I, so. I don't know harm no foul. Yeah. That's good. I would have felt terrible if I was the guy that slapped you and then you just absolutely gave it up. <laughs> I would have felt terrible. Yeah. <laughs> it was it was amazing. All right, so. Um, 
I figured you'd be a good person for this too. We ask guys that come on here as well. Obviously, when you're rolling, the game seems like it's coming easy to you. But what makes the big leaguers stick around is how they deal with failure. So in times when other than we won't go back into slapping in the back of the head because that didn't quite work. But in times when you were struggling, you know, how were you able to, you know, work through that and, you know, stay on plane and just kind of ride it out until the good times came again? What was your process with that? I would try to see everything as information. So uh, not try to assign any, any negative or positive to things, um, especially in those moments. Like I, would try to look at it and say, what is the, what is the reason I think that I'm failing? You know, what is it internally? Like, how do I, you know, how do I make an adjustment? Because I think when you're too, when failure means too much to you, uh, you put too much emotion to it and you see everything through that filter. So you start trying too hard. And that was one of the things that, that I had to battle constantly was trying too hard. Again, one of the things that fueled me was all the negativity and being overlooked. And that caused me to, to, to be really, you know, to operate off that very well. But the negative side of that is that it made me try too hard. It was like, you're doing enough already. Don't, you don't need to do too much. So a lot of my, 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 uh, reigning in basically was trying to allow my body to work and not try to overdo it. Um, again, mm -hmm. aggression was something I, I fed off of, but it was also the thing that led me to be bad as well. So I would use, I would try to, you know, sometimes meditate, pray. I would, uh, one of the things that kind of got me separated from that in the big leagues was going out with, with the fellas, going out for a drink, like, you know, balancing, balancing, uh, my life in baseball and my life outside of that. I, I wanted to do something. I wanted to, to completely disengage from my baseball mind. I think sometimes you get too, uh, involved and absorbed in what you're doing that you forget who you actually are. Mm -hmm. And so once I was able to find a way to center to be AJ, it, it, it allowed me to be AJ, the baseball player, a lot better because I wasn't bringing baseball home with me. Um, yep. So I would find ways to do that, whether it be flying my family, you know, be with them, flying some friends to hang out with them, to separate, you know, uh, hang out. We used to hang out in Martin Prado's room. We all hang out and just chill and after the game and, you know, have, have some, have some beverages and some food, you know, just hanging out to really detach, um, you know, stuff like that to really get away from trying so hard. So that was something I had to battle. Uh, but, you know, with failure, I think the biggest thing again is to try to, to recognize it just as information. I, this is, I tried this, this didn't work. Why didn't it work? Um, but to never doubt yourself. That was the biggest thing is, I think people people start to doubt themselves when they do bad, you know, and it's and it's tough. And I think it's even tougher for for guys coming up now because some of these guys coming up in the big leagues, they're not battle tested. They're not battle tested. They, they haven't. They come up so fast. Yeah, I mean, in the minor leagues, when you're down there for you know six, seven years or whatever, like you understand what it's like to fail, and yep. you know it, it's so you you get you, you it's never okay, but you accept it. You're like, all right, I am going to fail. But, and then when I fail, I had to figure out, all right, was it my sleep? Was it my mechanics? Was it my tempo? Was it my mind? What, was it whatever it was? And then you're able to have a checklist. All right, I have my checklist of things. Now, okay, today was my mental. Okay, what, what, led, what led me to be so mental about baseball? Oh, you know, I didn't get sleep. Um, some issues at home or whatever. So then you, you work on trying to figure out, all right, how to mend that part of yourself so that you can have your checklist of things and uh, you can be uh, more successful, you know, and, and the, the crazy thing about that is you can have your checklist, you can have all the things you check off and everything is looking good and you still can perform yeah. bad. Yeah. So it's under, it's, it's understanding that, yeah. that, that no matter what, man, like bad days are going to happen. You could throw the right pitch at the right count, according to analytics or according to you or whatever your feel and that ball still get hit out, you know, or yep. an error or there's, that's a beautiful, that's a beautiful thing about baseball. So much can happen. So understanding that you are going to fail and you are not your failures, that's just a failure and to figure out how to uh, uh, learn from those failures. And then more importantly, how to um, uh, uh, learn from your successes as well, how to, how to uh, maintain that, you know, so that, that mm -hmm. a lot of people don't talk about that as well. That's great. We had a kid I was <clears throat> working with this summer um, talking about, you know, when, your stuff's good. Everything was good. It just didn't work out. 
and he was spraying the ball everywhere, couldn't throw strikes this summer. I was trying to help him out, got him on plane with mechanics, stuff like that. And really, I knew he just mentally was struggling a little bit. So after a couple of weeks, he put in a lot of work. He's a hard worker. He went to the game, was pounding the zone, and gave up six runs. Not all of them were earned, mind you, yeah. but pounded the zone, was getting after it with guys. It was just like, looked like he was just going to run through a brick wall. I could, you could see in his face, he was locked in. And you, you would think a guy like that who's had a rough summer and had a hard time throwing strikes would be super disappointed. He came in the dugout, like dapped me up. and was like, that was me. Like, I don't care about the results. Like, I yep. felt good out there. All right. I was like, all right, that's it. Now we go. Like, forget about what happened. If you felt good, and you like that checklist, you checked off all those boxes. Like, we, you know, we can take that lump right now. But now, now is when we go. And so hopefully, I mean, he does well this year, but I feel like it's a huge stepping stone for guys that when, even when you're getting hit around or uh, you feel, let's say you feel really good and it's just not working out like you're, and you don't get the results you want, but you know, you're in a good spot. That's all right. Now we go. That's fine. But, and uh, another thing I want guys to understand too, so that everything you said was on point um, is that when it gets down to the bottom of it, when you're still pitching bad, I want you to ask a, a question to yourself. What are you going to do about it? Yep. What are you going to do about it? That's what it comes down to. Like if you, if you want to continue to play, then you're going to have to do something about it. Mm -hmm. And you can't say, you know, oh, woe is me. And like the game isn't fair and I'm, but I'm doing everything I'm supposed to, blah, blah, blah. It's like, mm -hmm. okay, yep. so what? So what? Yep. You're not doing, you're not, you're not, you're not uh, performing. What yep. are you going to do about it? You know, and that's, yeah. it, whenever I was doing rolling, like doing bad and all that stuff, you know, I was like, oh, man, but that error. And then I can't believe a G out there, you know, was lollygagging and let the ball. He, he never logged his lollygag, but, you know, something <laughs> like that where it's like and then I had to pitch four days in a row. Like if I, you know, if I had that one day off, I told him my arm was sore. Like, no, forget no all excuses. that. What are you going to do about it, man? Like mm -hmm. go out there and compete. Be a man, compete. And whatever happens, happens. And if you keep pitching bad, know that you're not going to be there. So what are you going to do about it? Like do yep. something about it. You know what I mean? That's you got to have to, you got to challenge yourself. You got to keep yourself accountable and say, all right, there's all these things. Yep. But what are you going to do about it? Basically, I think you should call that kid from the Mariners and have that conversation. <laughs> right? That's pretty much what should have just happened. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, he'll learn from that. I mean, there are, as you as you fail too, like you start to catch when you may fail again, especially if you're failing the same way that you mm -hmm. failed previously before. Like there were times where, you know, I was over trying and I felt myself like, whoa, 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 you're over trying. And then, but that outing may not have went the way I wanted to because I tried the, the, the amount of effort was still off. I may have been trying, you know, I may have not have been giving enough effort or whatever it is. So like, you yeah, learn to, to, yeah, you learn to like, uh gauge like oh hey i was doing this last time so you don't you don't uh, that's one of the reasons why i say you don't put negativity to that because if you feel negative pitching feel negative then whenever you feel that again you're going to associate your outing with negativity and then you're going to either try too hard or it's going to be overwhelming so when you say oh last time i pitched like this i was opening up my front shoulder okay so now let's close our front shoulder and let's go instead of Oh no, last time I opened my shoulder, I gave up six runs and I don't want to give up six runs again. And I, yeah. you know what I mean? You, you start yeah. associating yep. things negatively when it's just like, no, the, the, six runs, that's just information. Six runs information. That's not today. You know what I mean? So like being yep. able to try to look at, it's very, very hard, very, very so hard. hard. Um, but you know, when you learn how to do that to the best of your ability, it makes like even, even pitching well, um, not mean so much. You know what I mean? It's like, I'm just, mm -hmm. I'm just here to perform today yep. you know and what how my body is feeling today is is what i you're focusing on and, and how to maximize that you know instead of oh past few days or here's what i want to pitch like you know it's all those are all not in, in the present so we asked uh jordan farmar the guy that played for the lakers what what he would do when as far as that situation when things would go wrong he said with him and Kobe, they just, he goes, I never even thought about the failure part. We were just too busy competing. Like we were just too caught up in competing. It was just like, yep. it's hard to be there all the time. I think basketball is a little more fast paced, but in yeah. baseball, when you get caught up in just competing every day, I think that's when we 
you get in the best place, like the best mental state and you're just rolling. Yeah. You'll have bad outings here and there, but you're so caught up in winning the yeah. next day where mm -hmm. a bad outing doesn't even matter. Yeah, man. I, I love that. I mean, cause I think a lot of my bad outings or some of my bad, out, 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 I'm sorry, bad outings at least were because I was, you know, worried about mechanics or I was, you know, again, trying too hard instead of just beating that guy that's at, in the box. You know right. what I mean? So, um, I, I love that. That that's a good mentality to have, and hopefully, young guys adapt that or, or take that in, and so that they can be as successful as they want to be as well. I mean, because that's that's huge. I like that. Yeah. It's hard to not be selfish when you're out there. They're worried about stats or <laughs> let's just say arbitration. If you can just throw free agency, if you if you're able to throw all that out the window, stop worrying about strikeouts, analytics, da da da. Hopefully these young kids will get there, but that it starts with the organizations and hopefully they preach that just worry about competing or there's some guy in the clubhouse that can preach that. But, um, I think obviously you guys were good at it. Just competing closers. You have to, you, have, you just compete. You don't care about the stats cause you just got to win. I think that's where those guys need to be in that role where they're not selfish. They're just here to win. Yep. Yeah. I, I hated whenever, uh, the, um, like the beat writers or the media would come in and start telling me, Hey, so your numbers are blah, blah, blah. I'm like, don't oh, mention yeah. numbers. To me. Yeah. I don't want to know. I don't, don't, don't want to hear, I don't want to hear none of that, man. Like yep. just ask me, Hey, you've been feeling good lately that you can say that, you know? <sighs> yeah. Um, like don't throw numbers. Like shut up. I don't care about my scoreless streak. Shut up. Did we yeah. win or not? <laughs> yep. You know what messed me up? So me, me and Steve are, are the record holders for most consecutive saves. Correct. Yeah. Marlins, we're, we're, yeah. we're 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 tied at what 32 or 33 oh something like something like that something like that and so the day before that 30 or the day after that or after i got the 33rd save they were like hey you know that you and steve are now tied for most consecutive saves i was like <laughs> what how many and they're like oh 33 or 32 whatever it was and i was like i, I had no idea i had no idea the next one i blew <laughs> yeah, yeah. It jinx me, man. It's unbelievable. It me, it's inevitable. You know, it's just like yeah. the, it's just, it, you don't think it's in the back of your mind. Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. It whatever. Is. It always just never works out. That's why I never wanted to know. Yeah, because yeah. you're warming up or you're coming to the field that day. There's something where the mindset changed just a little bit, and now you're not just in competing. Now you're trying to break a record. It's just now the competing thing went out the window. You're still competing, but that wasn't your focus that day. Yep. Yes, exactly. There was a exactly. score. There was a scoreless streak thing. I think I was with. Oh no, it's happened twice. So with the Marlins, I, I was like a rookie. I set some rookie scoreless pitching streak, and a beat writer pointed it out. Next thing I know, wow, you know. And then I was with the Cubs. Uh, one of my teammates mentioned. I think it was La Stella, and he's like, "Man, your whip's at like a point eight right now. This is in August." I'm like, "It's gonna be dude, a one." Don't tell me that. Yeah, <laughs> skyrocketed after that, dude. I fell apart. I'm yeah, not. You start I'm not I wasn't, I honestly wasn't worried about it, but there's something to it. Like maybe like in the back of your head, that particular game, you know, like you're, you're thinking you're either a little bit extra or you just don't want to give it up again. And it's just something you, in there that's different. You start like, trying, you start yeah. trying instead of doing, you know what I mean? Like you, yeah. I was just doing it. I was just going out there and just trying to, to close out a game, try and put as many, like, I don't want to, I don't want to know, know my personal many. stat. Yeah, man. It's so that, that's what it was. You know, it was, um, uh, um, you know, you start trying too hard. You start, you know, putting stuff that doesn't really matter in, gets involved in that. When you just keep go out there and play your game, and it, yeah, your exactly. stats will end up the, where you want it. You know what I mean? Yep, absolutely. So, in the moment, boom, for yep. sure. How how did uh how did retirement feel to you guys after you retired? Like, what was the what was the feelings for you guys? <laughs> yeah, I mean, for me, it was you know kind of the same. I I just like when I've, when I said I was done and kind of knew it was going to be it, like you're talking about having that hunger and stuff. It's not that I didn't want to compete. It's just that every day, like motivation to, so I did, I mean, we might, I'm a lot different. We're all a lot different than each other, but at the end of the day, we have the same process pretty much. It seems like where like what I ate, how I know sleep was important, all that stuff, like all that kind of started going to the wayside a little bit towards the end, because it's not that I didn't care. I was just, I had different priorities. And so yeah. for me, you know, being home right now, I thought it was gonna be much harder being away from baseball because it's such the structure was great. I loved competing, loved being out there, like going to battle with the boys. But now, like, I I thoroughly enjoy just being with my family right now, and so that's that's not 
ever going to get old to me, I think. So it's just made it a lot easier. Like my girls are active doing stuff and, you know, my girls play softball. I like coaching them. My older daughter just started golf and that was super fun watching her compete, even though she doesn't realize she's competing quite yet. But yeah, I know I, I enjoy like, like helping them like grow as, as you know, grow up basically and being there as a dad. Whereas, you know, during the baseball season, it's so spotty. You miss a lot of that. You miss out on a lot of things that take you away from your family. So for now it's been, it's been an easier transition. I just need to think about, you know, what I need to do next as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I don't know how you guys did it with kids in the big leagues uh, because right now, I mean, I'm obviously retired and this is hard. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot yeah. of like, especially <laughs> the sleep and you know, all that stuff. Like there, there are some tough parts and to, I was a guy again, like we mentioned before, I had to fully be like in love with baseball. And that was the love of my life basically. So like, how do how you guys split that, you know, from it's you know, the, the actual love of your life to what you're doing? How do how do you care about both of them? Like that that part like is mind boggling to me. Is like like I, I it would be hard to split time between that for me, you know. So mm -hmm. um, that the sleep, um, the travel, all that stuff, man. Like that that part seems like that would would be very very challenging. Yeah. The, the off season, I'll say when the, when your family starts to grow, you talk about that flame, it was harder for me to fan the flame in the off season to get ready for an, a full season of baseball, knowing I'm going to miss out on a lot. That was really difficult for me. So that's when I think I started to, <clears throat> um, trend downwards a little bit, I guess you can say, uh, plus you're just getting older and your stuff dwindles, but I think that was the, that was the biggest thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. yeah but I, i've relied uh, on some philo early on you know in my career but, you know yeah you did yeah you were chunking it man that was yeah. you were nasty mm -hmm. man that slider <laughs> ah, it was it was dope it was dope to watch you watch you at your peak it was cool to, to to be alongside you with that man well i mean you're you know on your peak after that as well but like it was it was really dope to watch just to you know be next to that well you guys are in the same boat <laughs> you guys are good too. you played long careers so no, it was good going to yeah. battle with you. <laughs> well, <that's why> I... <laughs> but you're, yeah, you're doing a podcast with me, so here we are. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The the uh, the tough part for me has been the the not competing or not. Um, I still have that that drive. You know, if my arm, you know, I, I still could compete if my arm wasn't you know messed up. But like, I that part has been tough for me to like just be chill. So I go to the gym. I go to the gym, yeah. I still work out. I still, you know, I, I challenge myself in like cardio wise and stuff. But as far as that's, that's the only thing, like I need that, that fix, you know? So I, I'm definitely going to have to, uh, I, I'm actually starting to play golf a little bit more. So I was going to say, transfer that. Yeah. That's, that's the thing for me. I think too, if I, if I need to if I feel like I need to compete in something golf and if it, even if I'm not competing against someone else, it's always a sport you can compete against yourself to shoot a lower score. Like, so uh, I enjoy, I, that's why I enjoy it. It's just, it gets that competitive ju or competitive juices flowing. But hey, well, well, before we get off, why don't you tell everyone what you're doing right now? I know you're working on a project. If that's something you want to talk about. Um, to kind oh, of yeah, yeah. 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 So uh, I'm working on a, it's a show I created called The Locker Room. And we basically have conversations like this um, where we talk about the mindset and we talk about uh, process um, and I, and I talk with retired to active to people who are just starting out. Um, so when I'm talking to the people who aren't retired, we, we actually go through their process. I'll go to their, to their, uh, off season or to their workout and I do a workout with them, with their trainer. Um, I ask, you know, why they do specific lists, because that's one of the things that, that, uh, is starting to be now like known more is everyone has to work out slightly different like uh, based off of the type of body you have and where, where you're, where you lack strength and, you know, all that stuff. So, you know, I get to learn why people work out the way they do. And then also, uh, you know, with one of my guests, I got to actually go recover with him. So I went to a chiropractor, we did this neural training uh, awesome. where it helped him because he was a, he's a, a long distance ski jumper and he has the world record, world record at 254 feet. Wow. <laughs> so, yeah. It's crazy. It's crazy. So I got to spend the day with him and, and go through his process and go through his mentality as well, because you have to be, I mean, you got to be mentally solid for that type of stuff. Cause you're flying, you know, 30 feet yeah. in the air or whatever it is. 
Um, so, you know, and that's the cool thing about it is I'm interviewing all kinds of different people from different sports uh, to, you know, for me, I want to know how they, you know, I want to learn for myself and, and how to, how to perform mentally better for, for myself, you know? And I think other athletes and even people who aren't athletes, aspiring athletes or just the casual viewing, you know, fan will love to learn about these specific things and, and, and just see people go through their day, you know? And so from there we go, you know, we do have a meal or, you know, it's all based off of the person's day. It's basically a day in a life with an athlete. Yep. And, um, you know, so we go through their day and, uh, and we just kind of see what it's like to be a professional athlete or to have been a professional athlete. You get to hear the, the, the good things, the bad things and how they dealt with everything. And basically to humanize the athlete, I think when people want to be successful, they often, they, they think that when you're successful, that you don't deal with the negative mindsets or you don't deal with, the, uh, you don't have, uh, um, you know, uh, times where you don't think you're good enough or X, Y, and Z. Um, or if you're a baseball player that maybe you don't get as nervous when you play. The thing about successful people is that, so specifically for us, we are really good at performing nervous. Like mm -hmm. it's not a big thing for us. We still have those nerves. We still have to compete with, you know, the thoughts of uh, maybe you're not good enough and this and that. We just do a better job of overcoming those things. You have to deal with it. They don't, they don't, they don't ever go away. And I think some people think that, you know, it's hard to be, they don't realize it that, you know, those thoughts are always there but you have to have a daily practice and a daily understanding of how to overcome them. So interviewing people and talking to, to people to show uh, what their specific, you know, things that, that they have to think about and overcome and how they overcome them on a daily basis. And so hopefully people can uh, learn from these guests to, to then implement uh, a process for them to help them be successful. Because everyone, like you said earlier, we're all different, but we have certain things that are the same. So we all end up in the same place. So like how each individual ends up in the same place to give people a template of like, okay, this person, I agree with that. That's, I relate to that or this. So everyone, you're, you're just picking different ways to craft your own process to help you uh, be the best you can be at whatever it is that you're, that you're uh, trying to achieve. Well, that's awesome, man. Yeah. I'm looking forward to when that comes out. Um, any idea when we can be aware yeah, of that or? Yeah, it, it'll probably be sometime next month. Okay. Um, we're in the editing process and, you know, um, that's that whole, that whole world is crazy to me as far as like, I know nothing about it. So, uh, being able, I was a, I was a director, producer, I was, you know, the yeah. financer, <laughs> I was everything for it. So it's a whole learning process for me. And, uh, it, it I think it's a good transition to kind of, cause this is the part that I love is, is the mental side of it, talking about the processes and, and all that stuff. So, sure. um, I'm, I'm excited about it. And so, yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully, uh, everyone will like it. So we'll see. Absolutely. Well, we're looking forward to it, man. Thanks for coming on and spending some time with us hanging in the so-called locker room. So yeah, thank it's been you. Been great. Man. This, this was great. All right, fellas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Uh, <laughs> I got like two. Yeah, that's funny. AJ and I thought you until now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, see All right. ya. All right, see ya.